Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Puppies, puppy, puppy, puppy. And also joining us is Twilight Genesis. G'day. And for a moment there, I thought Silver Quill was saying "pappy" and not "puppy," and <laughs> my mind went completely anime for a moment. Uh, oh yeah, that 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 one, that, that that yeah. You went anime. I went to Papa the Sailor Man. Ah, me puppy. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I haven't seen that in a long time. Oh uh, yeah, there's so much to talk about, especially cartoons. But still, um, before we officially start, guys, I'm at home who are listening to this. Oh, thank you for listening. But uh, we need to make a few announcements. Um, coming as of August, most of us will be going to conventions. Silver and Sappy. If you notice, she's not here right now because her doggo is graduating from uh disciplinary school. Obedience school. Obedience school, yes. This time he, he's graduating from obedience school. So she had to attend that. And after that, Silver and Seppi will be going to BrodyCon. If you're going to BrodyCon, go meet them, say hi. And as for me and Twilight here, the week after that, we'll be heading to see PonyCon in Thailand. So if you do go there, say hi. We'll say hi and take pictures and talk about stuff. If probably episodes and games, who knows. And after that, Silver, I do understand that you're going on vacation with your family? Yes, we will be celebrating my father's 70th birthday with a, with a trip through Europe. And so looking forward to that, but it's time to leave the brony dumb behind for just a little bit so I can focus with my family. Hmm, understandable. But by the way, the last time when you did this, something major happened, right? What was it? Something major happened in the fandom. In the fandom, was it that some of the original Brony reviewers called it quits? I don't remember because I did remember something that you mentioned, like oh, after a week or so of not being in the fandom, suddenly I get bombarded by this. <laughs> I can't quite recall. We're still here, so at least we weathered whatever happened. Oh yeah, I mean it's nothing serious. Come on, like Brony fandom drama is similar to. Um, anime cartoon drama. Hey, if I can actually avoid being in the Brony drama, I consider it a good time. Oh, totally. Totally. Oblivious is a gif. The benefit of being unknown is that you don't get dragged into any drama, but you get to sit back and watch all of it. Totally. <laughs> Enjoy the puppety corn. <laughs> uh, but anywho, with that little housekeeping out of the way, um, I do hope you guys understand that, well, we're going to be away for a bit, but that doesn't mean content will not be flowing smoothly. Um, Sweetie Bot will do her best to keep the review show going. Just that uh, coming till the second half of August and the early part of September, the show will be a bit different. Um, not sure how, but we'll manage. But with that, let's get on to today's review, which is Season 7, Episode 6, Forever Philly. In this episode, Rarity attempts to spend quality time with Sweetie Belle, unaware that she's not a little Philly anymore. Meanwhile, Apple Bloom and Scootaloo attempt to help uh, Zoop, Zip, 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 Zipper Will, <laughs> Zipper Will reconnect with her pet doggo, Ripley. Ripley? Shouldn't it be a cat then? Why cat? Get away from her, you biznatch! <laughs> oh, yes. Hmm. Uh, yes. But anyway, <laughs> uh, before we jump right into the reviews, first impressions are in order. And Silver, what do you think of said episode? Oh, this was a fun one. It was a little bit slow for me. I enjoyed the the message that the, the Crusaders are growing up more, that they're not the, just the impulsive ponies we knew in the beginning. Although, as we'll talk about in depth, they've still got a dangerous streak and remain one of the greatest threats in Ponyville. Oh yeah, insurance levels are high. It's like, oh, now they're they're actively trying to help others get their cutie marks. Okay. The only place that has higher insurance premiums should be Japan with giant monsters. <laughs> uh, but it's fun to see how the Crusaders have evolved. Rarity is always fun with her melodrama. It's just that the repeated joke of her trying to force Sweetie Belle into a younger bonding time is, it wears just a little thin after, after the one or two repetitions. 
Yeah, but the rule of three, Silver, like everything needs to be done in trees. I don't know about that. I think sometimes you can defy convention. Oh, true. But noticing this um, is not trees. They did it. Um, they do a few things like, um, I think, fives or fours. So, yeah, they, I think the repetition felt a bit pushed because... Repetitive? Um, yes, yes, yes. Like, three is a nice number, but um, I think five is a bit too much. Hmm, but still. <laughs> Four is too many. And five is right out. <laughs> uh, but anywho. Really? No, no Monty Python fans in the audience? What? What? I understood the reference. There we go. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, didn't watch a lot of Monty Python in growing up. But anywho. Okay. Um, We've got a homework assignment for you then. Hey, I watched the Holy Grail. I, I highly enjoyed it. Well, that's Review where there's the Holy Grail next. Really? Ooh. Oh, wow. Ooh. I like your thinking. Oh, please. We still have UHF on the table for discussion. We can always have extra plans. <laughs> oh, God. But anywho, Twy, what do you think? I didn't particularly enjoy a lot. It was just kind of there. I, I did enjoy the fact that we did get to see Rarity actually missing and wanting to spend time with Sweetie Belle. I think that's one thing the show hasn't shown a lot of. The older sister characters actually deciding on their own that they want to go out and spend time with their little sisters. Most of the time when we see them together, it's for a brief moment as like a segue or because the little sisters have gone, uh, the CMC have gone to the older ponies. So I quite enjoyed that. But aside from that, I felt like this episode was probably one that should have happened, I don't know, about a season or two ago. At this point, it was like, oh, here, here's a nice moral, but this is one that probably should have been covered ages ago. Because at this point, anyone who's been watching the show knows that the the characters have grown up. And you'd think at this point, after this many seasons, Rarity would know that Sweetie Belle was not the little filly she used to be. It was a, a decent moral, but it could have been could have been played out a bit better if it was uh, in, in an earlier season. Mm, all right, all right. And as for me, this episode was, hmm, how do I put this? Um, when I first watched it, it felt a bit slow, but upon viewing it the second time, I kind of enjoyed it. Um, the moral was really, really good. Like, it's telling people, or it's, the message is, um, everybody grows up, their interests change, so you need to adapt to their change. Which, well, is true when it comes to real life. We grow up, our interests change, one day we like magic, and the other we like Yu-Gi-Oh! And then, suddenly, we don't like card games at all because it's a sham to waste our money on cardboard. And then suddenly we get back into it because of certain things, and so on. Mm, I'm sensing a bit of autobiography here, Norman. Tell us of your addictions. Oh, oh God, no. Like, there's so much. There's so much to cover. I spent I can relate to that. <laughs> you, you, you never know you're addicted to something until you realize that you spent almost a full grand on trading cards at a convention, only to sell them to your best mate for about $100. Oh, yeah, yeah. Know how that feels. That's why I keep everything I have. <laughs> uh, but still, but still. Episode's still awesome. Um, I like the subplot of the episode where um, Zippo Will and... Uh, the other two CMCs are trying to get Ripley to reconnect with uh, Zippo Wheel. So yeah, that, that's something nice to look at it. And it does tell that Sweetie Belle here is the brains of the whole CMCs. But putting that aside, let's go into the review. So if you guys have not seen this episode yet, we do highly recommend you go watch it. Um, pause this video here and go watch it first. And welcome back. So we start off our episode with Sassy Saddle being in a panic. A tizzy, if you say. Good to see her again. Yes. It's nice to see her in Tantalot. And also a few background ponies, like that emo goth moon pony. <laughs> what? I love that description. Emo goth moon pony. That I'm headcanning in that. That is her official name now. I don't care what anyone says. <laughs> Technically, she has an official name. 
Although the uh, the acronym is a little hard to pronounce, IGMO. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but 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 we get into the episode proper with Sassy Settles being a panic, just putting things, checking things, and making sure things are up to date for the uh, seasonal change. And well, Rarity's not panicking because she's been here before. And is anybody here? confused why Sassy's in a panic? I thought she was the manager. She's supposed to be on top of everything. In my experience, managers are like that regardless. You think you're on top of it, but then you realize how much is to be done. If anything, I think managers know more than anyone what <laughs> how much is being demanded of them. But in this scenario here, um, I don't know if a lot is demanded from Sassy because Rarity is kind of the big boss. She does the designs. She did the order and stuff. And, well, it seems that um, Sassy is there just to sell clothes and take care of the shop. You're, you're saying Rarity's the big boss? Oh, She's yeah. the one with Metal Gear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's your new boutique, Outer Haven? Uh. Sorry, everything uh. is five degrees of Metal Gear. <laughs> uh, next, you'll be saying David Hayter will be voicing Rarity next time. Well, you know, and he'll look fabulous like while doing it. <laughs> he will, and you know, I don't mean to feed the haters, but uh, but yes, continuing on. Um, Rarity is on top of everything. Tell Sassy to calm down, chill. We got this. You're the best manager I could hire. And yeah, you should relax. Uh, go to the back, see what we need to do. While I'll look at this photo of Sweetie Belle and remember that when was the last time I saw her? Oh no, I can't remember. When was the last time? And oh, she goes into a crying fit. Which is kind of nice. Uh, this is sort of a, a very nice follow-up to uh, Sister of Social where Rarity used to treat Sweetie Belle as sort of an inconvenience. Now her little sister is just, I want to spend time with you. I'm glad for the time we have together. She took that lesson to heart, for which I'm glad. Yeah. I'm slightly concerned that, as far as I recall, the last time Rarity and Sweetie Belle were shown to be doing anything together was the cart before the pony. And if she's forgotten that, and the lessons she had to learn from that, which... The show wanted to make it a lesson for the CMC, which is confusing. That that that's cause for concern as to how Rarity may treat Sweetie Belle in the future. But you you know what? Like I'm thinking, Rarity here is just missing the whole idea, or just misses hanging out with Sweetie Belle because most of the time she'll be working. If you really take a look, see she's busy most of the time. She'll be handling things at her boutique. Um, the one in Ponyville, Manhattan, and the one at Cantalot. She won't be hanging out with Sweetie Belle most of the time. And Sweetie Belle, okay, um, she was confusing at first during season one with her sleeping locations, but we know that her parents are in town, so now we know that she lives with her parents and sometimes sleep over at Rarity when she's not inconvenient. I would like to see more of that, of of Sweetie Belle living with her parents. And find out how her parents can be inconvenient. (laughs) Yeah, but from what I can understand, the parents like to go on vacations. Maybe a little too often. It's like, you're raising a young filly. What is your travel budget? Oh, we won the lotto, did you know? Man, if ponies have the lotto. Wait a minute. This is a world where they have time travel spells. Has no yeah. one thought to abuse the lotto system? Not really. With the time travel spell, it takes a powerful unicorn to pull it off. There are some of those powerful unicorns and who probably are a little hard up for cash sometimes. There's only two in record who can pull off that spell. Twilight Sparkle and Starlight Glimmer. And look what happened to them. I don't know. Maybe Celestia has a little Ponzi scheme going. <laughs> oh, it turns out the crown won the lotto again. <laughs> I wonder, it's an inside job. Uh, but anyway, uh, Pony gambling aside, um, we see that Rarity is really bent up over this situation. And Sassy just says, 
since everything's handled, why don't you go and hang out with Sweetie Belle? I can take care of the shop, no problem. And she does. Just so I can get some peace and quiet. Yes. While Rarity heads back to Ponyville, we get to see the CMC's almost ran a guy over with a slab of marble. Yay. Yes, the yeah. Crusaders, even even when they're, they've are they got their marks, they still remain a public menace. I have no idea how the citizens of Ponyville can sleep at night, knowing that these three could strike at any time. Oh, a high premium of insurance. Like, you, you got to remember, like, the highest place for insurance is got to be Ponyville, the Crystal Empire, and also Japan, just because of kaiju attacks. Well, Japan, they, but... They, Imagine for a moment uh, a Japanese uh, pony running through Ponyville going, Ah, Crusader! Crusaders! <laughs> I can oh. see that happening. The residents can't sleep because the CMC still have a bedtime. <laughs> oh, well. <clears throat> but anywho, um, nearly running over a civilian with a slab of marble, the Crusader goes to a uh, foal who has a knack for building sculptures and his material for building said sculpture is with food. Interesting. I mean, well, I've heard of finger foods. Mm. Food is an art form in and of itself. True, true, but you're not supposed to build sculptures out of it unless it's ice. Well, that's cold as ice. <laughs> ice to see you. <laughs> Oh, he went for, he went the Batman route. Uh, Norman, yes. how could you? Uh, okay. <laughs> um, the CMC gave this fool a chisel and a hammer and asked him to go at it. I will say, I, I actually dislike that scene. If only because it's, it's saying, oh, you have a talent that you can instantly do this perfectly and create a stone statue that would take someone, a genuine artist, months of preparation and effort. And I like, I get it's a kid show. It's meant to just convey this, but I don't like conveying to kids the idea that once you know you're good at something, you'll instantly be an expert. It's still years of practice. Uh, yeah, that's the downside of speeding things up for convenience sake. But still, um... It is one of those things where it's nice to have a general idea of what you're good at at a young age. Maybe the way that it's told here is not best, but still um, a general idea of what you're good at at a young age is good. Like a lot of people in South Korea would probably be good at gaming and probably would want to be in an esports team. So yay, that's one way to make money nowadays, playing video games. Could you just imagine that? Oh, but I've heard from friends that's a, that's a short-lived career. You've got less than 10 years, uh, and then it's kind of like being in the Olympics. You've got X amount of time, and then you've got to get as many endorsement deals as possible. Oh yeah, that's true for sports too. Try not to get uh, caught for, you know, doing a little puff. Oh yeah, true that. But still, it it goes for sports too, like f- a football player. Um, I'm forgetting one of the most popular players for Real Madrid. He started his career when he was 16, was it? Oh, I forgot. But he is uh, very popular till now. Till now, like me and a friend of mine talked about it, and when I asked how old is he, and he said he was like about 30. Like what? 30? How how long was he in the club? How young did he start? And when he revealed the age to me, it's like, oh, that young eh? Okay, that makes a lot of sense. But still, um, when it comes to doing things you like and doing it with a passion and just going at it because you're good, it's a noble pursuit. Like how some YouTubers out there are doing YouTubing for real life. But back on to the episode review. Um, so, Twilight, we haven't heard from you in a bit. What do you have to say? Uh, well, for this scene, I'm just glad that they didn't go with the super annoying cartoon trope of the holding the chisel and the hammer against one edge, tapping it lightly, and then causing instant sculpture. Because that's just 
far worse and more annoying than how they presented it. As, as Silverquill said, the whole, oh, he sees it, gets inspired, instantly masterful sculpture. <laughs> yeah, that can get annoying. That can get annoying. I think Although, I think it's safe to say we're we're all not fans of shortcuts. True that. I mean, the occasional shortcut here and there is fine if it's something that's like I found a more efficient way to do something. But in that sort of scenario, no, those sorts of shortcuts are just annoying and unfair. And I'm also wondering how long is it going to be before we get an episode where the CMC have put themselves in hospital doing something dumb like this, riding a slab of marble down a uh, down a hill it looks like fun but considering how sharp a stop that they came to and they got thrown off well they would have been thrown off i forget if they jumped off first it's been a while since i watched the episode i think they got thrown off looking at the screenshots here they got thrown off yeah with style i would imagine now that if, if they got thrown off that would have hurt or at least it should have hurt oh but you know they're wearing helmets so it's all okay Yes, they were proper protection. Yes. As they nearly die. (laughs) Oh, you. But anywho, moving on, we head back to the clubhouse. With another satisfied client, they proceed on to the next one, which would be Zipperwill. Wow, is that how you pronounce her name? Yep, Zipperwill. Zipperwill. Although you have to say it like five times faster because it's Zipperwill. Zipperwill. So anywho, um, their next client is Zipper Wheel, and she has a problem. Well, her cutie mark appeared when she found her puppy. Um, and they've been so best friends since they were young. But now, it seems that little doggo is kind of distant and is wondering, is it my cutie mark that's uh, having a problem here? And well... The CMCs agreed and they will help Zipper Will find the answer for her problem. Unfortunately, Rarity they didn't get the info and barged in. Are you still stepping on their, their customer? Yep. Oh so tiny. Although I do I do like the comparison they make between Sweetie Bell and Rarity. They both can predict when a new client is gonna walk in the door. <laughs> both her just as uh was it Apple Bloom and Sassy Saddles both comment, oh, you're good. <laughs> yes. It's rarity sense. It's like rarity. pinky sense, except for shopping. <laughs> yes, for money coming in. Yay. I can see rarity. My fashion senses are tingling. There's something unfabulous out there. I must go. But Filthy Rich has a similar one. He's like, I can hear the, the jingle of coins in a <laughs> coin pouch from a hundred yards. <laughs> Oh, he's not that greedy. I don't know. If Scrooge McDuck can get away with it, why can't Filthy Rich? I mean, he's nice, but that doesn't mean he he doesn't like money. Money, money, money. Okay, okay. Anywho, getting back on track. Um, Rarity barges in and declares that she and Sweetie Belle will spend time together because I'm in a midlife crisis right about now and I need you to be with me. So... Uh, the rest of the CMC says, yeah, we got this. We can handle this. No problem. So why don't you and Rarity hang out while we deal with Zipper Wheel and her doggo? All righty then. We'll catch you later. Right away. This, this should have been warning lights for a recipe for disaster or at least uselessness considering that Scooty, uh, Scootaloo doesn't seem to be all that bright and Apple Bloom has a history of not being able to deal with herself, her own problems. Let alone anyone else's. You can start a song. I'm a danger to myself and others. But still, but still, uh, it's interesting that the brains of the group is Sweetie Belle. Remember way back when, when Apple Bloom seems to be the one with the plans while uh, Sweetie Belle was kind of the support? Actually, ever since uh, Stairmaster, I've always kind of viewed Sweetie Belle as the brains of the group. It's just that she's not always the most focused of brains. Apple Bloom is more the driving passion for the group, the heart. And Scooby is the energy for the body, but Sweetie Belle is the brains. And that makes a pretty good dynamic for the group. Oh, I never noticed that. Thank you, Silver. 
Brave. No, the problem is if you if you take three parts of a body and split them together, uh, split them apart, they don't generally work as well. <laughs> no comment. My my favorite part of this scene is actually that uh, all the pictures on the wall when they they enter the clubhouse, they've only just gotten back in the clubhouse. They've already got a picture of the young cult that they helped, which mm-hmm. makes you wonder how long it was between them get helping him get his cutie mark and then getting back to the clubhouse to have a, a fully framed photo to put up on the wall. Nah, Twy, I think the real question here is, does digital photography exist in Equestria? Or is it a magic wall that just fills in as they go? Oh, yeah. Oh, fun fact, um, if you take a look-see at that wall, um, here's what Rarity said all her satisfied clients that are happy with their um, cutie marks and whatnot. Like, you remember what she said, right? I, I don't really remember the whole line, but it's similar to that. And if you take a look-see, happy clients, big Magnetosh and Shirley. What? Well, he was happy he didn't have to do his chores after after they messed things up. Yeah, but still, <laughs> like... <laughs> Big Mac it's and starting to feel a bit more like a, a, a wall of memories as opposed to a wall of achievements because they've got various things like there's just an Apple family photo in the corner. Uh-huh. There's Babsy. They snuck Gabby behind uh, Sweetie Belle's head. Uh, Gabby was a success because even though they didn't, well, even though that Gabby didn't get her CUNY mark, she was an honorary member of the CUNY mark Crusaders and got a quote-unquote cutie mark with a plaque. Yeah, yeah, you, you know what I mean. Yeah, that's, that's why I think. It's more like a wall of memories as opposed to achievements. And they've got a, a picture from the uh, cart before the pony, the, 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 uh, the, the event that Rarity apparently does not remember. <laughs> You're still on it, aren't you? You're still on it, aren't you? I'm, I'm not going to let that go. Now that I've realized it, I ain't letting that go. <laughs> that was an important lesson for, for the, the, the big sisters to learn. And if Rarity's already forgotten it. Uh, okay, if you say so, my friend. Uh, but anywho, let's get back on track. While the CMCs help Zipper Will with her doggo, Ripley, we are entertained by puppets. Yay! Who doesn't like a good puppet show, yay? Hey, I still like the Muppets to this day and age. ABC TV series notwithstanding. Muppet babies. <laughs> yes, I'll even take. I'll even roll with that. <laughs> yeah, Muppets. Uh, but still, um, Rarity here highly enjoys the puppet show, but Sweetie Belle here doesn't seem to enjoy it. Maybe she needs something older. Maybe Avenue Q. And that might be a bit too old for Sweetie Belle. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. She says something, like, really complex. It's like, words strung all together, and let's see if I can find the quote in the transcript. Oh, yes. I um, guess I just prefer black box experimental theater. Wow. Okay. okay. Those are big words. Uh, black box experimental theater. Um, does that sound like MST3K, Mystery Science Theater? MST3K? Yeah. Does it sound like that? I don't think so. It sounds more gothic because it's a black box. If it were a pink box, it'd be more, I don't know. Maybe it's her truce box. Not sure. Mm, but still, um, our little sweetie bells growing up. Could you just imagine us following the progression of this show and following the progression of the CMCs since they were Phillies to now? Like, wow, we, yeah. Hmm. Isn't that what we've kind of done? I know, it, it just hit me like a truck because recently I heard an interview with Michelle Creever, the voice of Apple Bloom. She mentioned that she started the show when she was 8 and now she's 17. So, wow. Time flies. I know. Uh, but anywho, um, Memories in the corner of my eyes. Uh, but anywho... While Sweetie Belle is entertaining Rarity, they, well, enjoy the puppet show with his slapstick humor. But you know what's great after watching Puppet Tree? Desserts. Yeah. <laughs> Who's yeah, is well. my dessert? It's also my appetizer. <laughs> I was going to say it's my water, but yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, usually yeah. have it while watching the puppet show, not <laughs> after. It's like, yeah, just the right amount. Those puppets are talking to you in a whole new way, man. <laughs> uh, but, but, but. Oh, uh, well, um, yeah. Entertainment <laughs> booster. Yeah. Woo! Okay. I'm fine. But, <laughs> but There's a reason I work in a bar. <laughs> but, anywho. Um, we ain't, we, we ain't hitting the hard side of babies. Our heroes, um, Sudi Bell and Rarity, head to uh, an ice cream parlor. And Rarity here convinced the original owner to come out of retirement just to serve Sweetie her favorite ice cream. And I think that is the Peeps Quick Party clown ice cream. And it's very, very tiny. Talk about your tiny desserts. Oh, it, it lives up to its name. Pipsqueak is right. That thing, I'm not even sure if that would satisfy an actual baby. I'm going to go with no because kids kids want loads of ice cream. You remember one of those things on the internet and also probably DeviantArt where um, artists create uh, or recreate food in little tiny miniatures? This seems like that. Well, you can recreate all the food you want. I just want you to recreate more. <laughs> yeah, uh, and poor Sweetie Belle here. Like, she just tells Rarity that, you know what, Um, how about a salad? And Rarity's surprised. Like, what? Since when are you this practical? And Sweetie Belle here has to give in and says, you know what, another ice cream would be better. Yay. I just have to wonder, what, what dirt does Rarity have on the shop owner to make her come out of retirement for this? I won't say dirt. I say a free dress for a scala. And you know how expensive Rarity dresses are. Or a big pouch of coins. Oh, yeah, true, that too. Aw, oh, come on. If I want to have some dirt. Little shady dealings. <laughs> I, I like... can only imagine what kind of dirt that, that, a, that a, a sweet shop owner would have. Uh, you know, I- illegal ice cream practices. <laughs> no, no, uh, no, 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 no. So they use cow's <laughs> milk instead of goat's milk or something. Or oh, it turns out your lactose-free is not soy. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but but. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, but anywho, on the B plot, uh, we get to see the doggo, and he's not interested. Moving on, because that seems to be the whole case for now. It's pretty obvious that uh, Zipper will shouldn't be calling him Puppy. My family's had several dogs, and we always call them Puppy. And it, you know, it could be gray in the muzzle and just napping like most hours of the day. And it's still Puppy to us. Oh, true. Uh, but you know what? I'm going to fast forward a bit because things are getting a bit repetitive. Oh, aren't they though? My criticism of this episode. Yes, but anywho, I'll speak things through. If you have anything to say, please do. But uh, Rarity and Sweetie Belle wait in line for a balloon. Um, the other CMCs try to get Ripley to play with them or pl- get uh, to play with Zipper Will, but they fail. Uh, Sweetie Belle goes to the group asking if you guys need help, but have to go back to Rarity because the guy making the balloon is ready for them. And... Balloon sculpture guy really makes a good bouquet of balloons. That's really good. Really, really impressive. I think Daniel from Project C Pony Con will be really impressed. But, um, enough of that. Let's head to the photo shoot. Photo shoot is really interesting, but Sweetie Belle is not amused. I have to say, most of the costumes that are really, really cute. Oh, they're adorable. Definitely. Oh, talking about really, really cute, um, Zipper Will. She's cute, but Doggo doesn't seem to think so and decides not to play with her anymore. And Zipper Will runs off. And yeah, while Zipper Will runs off, Sweetie Belle just tells Rarity off that she's not a little filly anymore. And maybe you don't know me like you think you do. I've grown up and I have different things. So run off. She could have broken into song though. If you don't know me by now. True. Uh, song would be oh, awesome. This brings me to the criticism that I didn't really have when I first watched the episode because I didn't pay much attention. But after watching it again and listening to one of my mates uh, give me give me his thoughts, 
I, I come to the thing that this is one of those a bit of a forced confrontation in that throughout the episode when uh, Sweetie Belle doesn't respond with glee and joy to all the things uh, that Rarity is taking her to, Rarity has asked her repeatedly, like, what's wrong? Or, or, you know, that sort of thing. And Sweet Bell has done that typical, really annoying trope of nothing's wrong, everything's fine, when obviously it's not. And then you end up with the whole, you don't really know me at all, otherwise you would have known something was wrong sort of uh, arguments. And that really bothers me, because that, that sort of gives the impression that if something's wrong, you shouldn't tell people that something's wrong until it gets to the point where you feel like you have to blow up at them. Well, I do understand your frustration, but at the same time too, I kind of understand why Sweetie didn't just tell Rarity to begin with, because um, Rarity took time off from her busy schedule to hang out with Sweetie Belle, and that by itself takes a lot of effort, considering how busy she is. Like, this is what Sweetie Belle is thinking. Like, honestly, this is what she's thinking. Because us as audience, we know what's going on. So we can just say, ah, she's having a midlife crisis. That's why she's right here. So that, uh, this is so funny. But Sweetie Belle doesn't know this. I'm in agreement with Twilight here. Basically, when the show is simply, it's having a conflict because nobody's saying anything. It's kind of like with the, with the cart before the ponies. You know that the, you know where the solution lies and it's, it's understandable when people hide their commentary because they, they don't want to hurt someone's feelings. But then when you, when you have a big blow up and undermine that, kind of true to life, but it's asking us to say that rarity is in the wrong when really Sweetie Belle was also very much in the wrong here. That blow up was not truly justified. And you know what? I could, I can see that and I'm, Agreeing with you guys with that. But still, um, I still hold to my point where if they... T- you know, I always say this from the very beginning of any show. If they just talk it out, things will be over. Things will be awesome. No no fighting, no nothing. But <laughs> that won't make a show, would it? I mean, it can. You, you just have to do it right. Normally, you have to get characters who have conflicting beliefs and ideologies and viewpoints where you can have them talk and, and dis, uh, actively disagree and still have a conflict, even though everyone understands where everyone else is standing. Oh, true, true. But in this situation right here, right now, um, conflict will be probably over. But still, um, we have a bit more before we reach the end. Uh, let's see. Um, Sweetie Belle walks off, meets up with Zipper Wheel, talks to her about um, her little doggo, and discovers that, hey, little doggo is not so little anymore. Sweetie takes a look at the situation and understands the problem. And the problem is, Doggo is growing up. He is bored with the same old toys. Entertain him with new toys and new activities. Have you tried walkies? I heard that that is a really good way to kill time. And also throwing sticks. That seems to get the dog really excited. Is it true? I don't know the dog, so I got no idea. Well, uh, my family's had several golden retrievers, and certainly they love to chase things and catch them. We never really got the whole retrieving part. <laughs> the, dog, the dog would bring the, the stuff back, but getting them to let go was more of a challenge. <laughs> so at least you got that part. I have a Jack Russell. We, we throw, the, throw the toy, goes for the toy, he grabs the toy, bolts in a different direction, <laughs> and sits down the trees on it, and then runs away when you try and go, come over to get it from him. <laughs> That's right, this is mine now. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, uh, well he seems. <laughs> you know what? I I I don't know how to respond. Uh, and, and we we have a rule: we we don't buy him squeaky toys anymore because that usually results in about a good forty minutes of howling, <laughs> barking, and squeaking simultaneously as he bolts up and down the backyard. <laughs> no Dogs comment on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I have cats. <laughs> ah. Well, and I have cat allergies, so I'm, I'm sorry, Norman. We we can't come to terms on this. I, I don't bring my cats to conventions, and you don't bring your dogs to conventions, so it's all good. And Jill even brought her golden retriever. I was very jealous. Who? 
Fluttershy's voice actor? Ah. Actress. Fluttershy. Um, and she Lee. brought her golden retriever puppy, and it was wonderful. Oh. Walk in the very, very peaceful puppy. Didn't oh, seem at so all cute. put off by all the people. Oh, uh, that's just too awesome. Uh, but anywho, um, continuing back on, um, Rarity here, um, heard the whole conversation that, um, Sweetie Belle had with, um, Zipper Will and agrees with what, um, Sweetie says and discovers or no- notice that she's in the wrong here and says she's sorry and let's hang out like adults now. Oh yes, let's hit the bars. Yes, the ice cream bar and let's have a huge ice cream that it's ridiculously huge and only you know, that that is a huge ice cream. Like, I don't think I can finish that. Can any of you? It's just as big as Sweetie Belle is, almost. <laughs> I mean, I could probably eat that, but I, I have a stomach like iron. Yeah, all you gotta do is shift your kidneys over to the left a little, and you're good to go. Oh, God. Ah, fry out my liver. <laughs> yeah, what does the liver ever do for you anyway? <laughs> I think filter stuff, probably, I don't know. Uh, yeah. But but anywho, with that happy moment, um, they get a picture, and it's um, sit picture is sit on top of Rarity's uh, counter in Canterlot, and yay, episode ends. Wow, uh, that took us a bit, but still, I do like the conversation we had. Um, a lot of revealing things, especially doggos. Yes, it has a nice ending to the episode. I, I like that they. Tried to do the parallel between Sweetie Belle and Rarity situation with Zipperwell, her Zipperwill and her dog. It, it, that was a nice, it mean, it, it didn't pan out so well with how they presented Rarity and Sweetie Belle, but I quite liked how they did it with Zipperwill and her, her dog. Cause I, I've known a couple people who don't really under, understand that when their pets get old, they either don't want to do the things that they used to or they can't. And then they get really frustrated with their pets. So it's a good, that's a good story. Uh, a good moral is that, you know, your pets grow up and you have to, you have to adapt to the fact that they've grown old. But it does raise a question. She's had the puppy since she was little and the puppy was little. How fast do dogs age in Equestria for them to already be like looking fairly that, that old and she's still a little filly? Honestly, I don't Time know why paradox. I don't know. <laughs> uh, probably. I, I don't know. Um, Especially since Winona, as we've seen her, Winona, uh, I think Applejack's meant to have had Winona since she was small. But Winona still looks fairly young. Well, Twy, are you sure that's uh, the first Winona, not version 2 or 3? Or Immortal Winona. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good one too. Yes, the the Apple family made peace with a great old one, and we know it is the emissary. <laughs> it's, it's where, where they got the, all, all the apples from. So they they have all this apple power from a great old one. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> but uh, still, what do you think of that episode? Well, I enjoyed it. I agree that the episode is asking us to say that Rarity is totally in the wrong, but here's Sweetie Belle not really voicing the end in some ways giving assent to what, uh, or rather consent to what um, Rarity is up to. So the so the tension between them can struggle a little, but ultimately there's enough adorable in this, and there's enough nice, there's nothing mean-spirited in all of this, which makes it a pretty enjoyable episode. And it is nice to see whenever the sisters just explore their dynamic, rather than you know, having to rush in and stop their annoying little sisters from nearly destroying the world. <laughs> or running people over with with uh, granite slabs. Oh, true that. Uh, but still, uh, <laughs> it makes a really fun episode. Yay! Although, jumping ahead a little, if if the apples do have a contract with the great old one, now we know what happened to the parents. Yeah, hey, sorry, y'all, but it's time for our sacrifice. Are you no, sure? it's fine. My granny Smith is still alive. <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, that, that, that is a review for another day, my friends. Uh, but, 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 as for me, I like this episode. This episode is a fun one. And I do enjoy the dynamic with Rarity and Sweetie Belle. It's one of those things where they always play well with each other, but we need to 
have them more. Like, um, we don't get a lot of CMC episodes in this season. Well, much. Um, coming to, um, coming to the future, we'll get an episode where the CMCs get involved with Big Mac's love life again. And other than that, anything else? Oh yeah, <laughs> actually next review will be Scootaloo um, discovering her quote-unquote big sister's parents. Yay. Oh, oh, that episode. Oh, do I have some things to say about that? <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Uh, for, probably, but still, um, I, I like this episode. And yes, the parallel between um, Doggo and Sweetie Belle, not the best one to do, but it's a pretty nice one to make. Eh, but well, um, that's my thought on it. Uh, but well, Silver, um, I, this is usually the point where I ask you, um, what we'll be doing for next week's episode review. But you know what? Nah, I'm gonna leave it a mystery because next week's episode review or discussion podcast is gonna be a Patreon supporter by name Dragatorius. You know what you ask for. So we'll keep it a mystery because if I say it now, it won't be fun anymore. Plus, uh, when the video comes out, you can already see it by the title. But still, that's for next week's review. And talking about the Patreon supports, if you want to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. Um, every support will give you access to deleted content or exclusive. And also early access to the review and discussion podcasts. And also a huge thank you from me. Um, I like to thank Lurker Cat, Twilight Genesis, Nemdragatoria, Starstream, Master of Lag, and also Jeffrey. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Norman. And with that, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecilia Vakril. I'm Twilight Genesis. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode review. See ya. Adios. Cheers. So, how do we end this one again? Because there's usually a funny moment where we try to do something and I got no idea for this one. Probably I'm having a like, midlife crisis or something like that. Oh, quick, go see your little sister. Wait, do you have one? I do, but she's in bed with the babies and I don't want to bother them. Ah, uh, oh well. Take it to the puppet show tomorrow. That's right. Puppet show's fixed everything.